Well, I'm going to do this this way because some of the comments that I run into online, it, it, you got to see them to believe them. It's it's just like I, I can't believe that you have to explain some of this stuff to people. It's it's really amazing. So let me just state how I feel up front. In my opinion, Neely, Jordan Neely should not have died because Jordan Neely was not a combatant in a war zone. Daniel Penny responded like Jordan Neely was a combatant in a war zone, even if he was threatening to hurt other people on the subway. He was still a civilian. There is a time and place for everything. Even neutralizing civilian violence when you are not a cop, in my opinion, this is this is all my opinion here, and I'm looking at this from my view of the martial arts. You are supposed to use civilian level tactics for civilian level violence unless things are going deadly or they've escalated to deadly force that's when you use deadly force i can tell you that it is entirely possible to hold someone down and not kill them you can even apply a chokehold in a manner on someone where you do not kill them I know that because I have, in addition to my Taekwondo background, I have a Shodan in Judo, Black Belt in Judo. When we do chokeholds for Judo, we have an arm next to the, you can't see me if I'm small on the, uh, if I'm small on the view here. Let me, st- I'm going to stop this and just go to regular camera for a second. So in Judo, rather than just choking here on the neck, you you can you can do there are a bunch of things you can do you can use the clothing to cut off the flow of the blood here you can focus on the sides of the neck and not on the trachea so that you just you cut off the blood flow here of these arteries going up to the neck that makes the person pass out you have an arm next to the head here so that when you apply pressure you would just be cutting off the flow of blood here and you can make the person pass out that way. And you have support from this arm so that there's not too much compression on the neck. Also, if you've ever played with chokeholds before, it doesn't take that long for a good chokehold to render someone unconscious. Even if what you end up having to do because you're restraining someone is you choke them till they pass out, they wake up, they want to fight again, you just pass them out again, stop. They were going to move back, you pass about again, stop. Eventually they'll stop. Or you hold it loose enough so that they are applying the pressure that makes them pass out, not you. You have to have some give in there. Not only do I know about this type of thing from training and teaching, I have had to restrain people during mental health breakdowns. And if you're watching this and you think I'm talking about you, I'm not just talking about any one person. I have had to handle people who are who have had mental health breakdowns <laughs> several times now. Different people at different points in my life. As a matter of fact, one of the most prolific ones, I did a video on it a long time ago. I can't. I think I had to take the video down because I use copyrighted footage from one of the Street Fighter animes. If you look up Street Fighter 2V, there's a scene, I think, in the first episode where Cammy loses it and it takes five people to hold her down. I use that because that was pretty close to what we had to do when we were high school kids. And a girl that knew karate had a mental break 
and she was fighting people at this backyard party. <laughs> of course, everybody is looking at Cecil. You got this? Cecil had to hand it off. Cecil didn't handle it all the way by Cecil's stuff, but Cecil had to hand it off because they all went at her and she did the four directional kick, kick to the front, kick to the back, kick to the side, kick to the side. She did that drill. It's like, that's a drill. And she used a drill to knock four dudes out. So I had to stand in front of her and do the blocking until I could grab her leg and do like a pressing block and pull with this hand to take her down. And then we held her down. And we held her down without killing her. And if you want to try to use the excuse that, well, it would be harder to hold down someone like Jordan Neely because that's a man. No. That doesn't fly with technique because especially a Marine veteran who is, we can assume, was in a lot better shape than I was at 17 years old. He would, no, he's capable. Plus he had help from two other people. They should have been able to restrain him without killing him. Okay. It's all kinds of weird justifications that people want to use on the internet to try to defend and justify why they don't even think that um, Daniel Penny, the Marine veteran who um, is getting most of the smoke getting all the blame for Jordan Neely's death. He shouldn't get all the blame for Jordan Neely's death because he wasn't the only person restraining him. He's just the one that's on camera and that's on the hook for it because it was two other people there holding them down. You can't tell me because I, you see, because I know better. You, you cannot convince me that it is impossible for three people to restrain one man without killing him. Number one, if it's not your job to restrain people, you may want to think twice about restraining people. I understand you want to protect your fellow passengers, but maybe things would play out differently in court. But what we know right now, no, it, it, it was not a deadly force situation. It sounds like he was upset, yelling, saying, I don't care, I don't care, I want some food. That's all we're hearing. And another thing, too, is see, it, it's funny how I manage, I guess I'm the only American citizen on earth who has ever been told that when you are called to judge a situation, you have to judge based on what happened at that time. Anything that happened before then is not necessarily relevant. People are trying to bring up previous assaults by Jordan Neely, the person who died. Jordan Neely is not on trial. The people who are on trial are Daniel Penny, the Marine who choked Jordan Neely to death and the other two people that helped hold him down should be on trial as well. Jordan Neely cannot be charged with anything because he is dead. He is not here to stand trial. Daniel Penny is here to stand trial because the people who make laws believe that he may have gone overboard in his administration of restraining someone. So police officers have to have rules when they restrain people. I'm sure if I, the individual citizen who is a part-time martial arts instructor, I'm sure if I held down one of your relatives, even if he or she were acting wild and I hurt one of your relatives, you won't want me to be held accountable. But there are a lot of people on the internet who don't think that Daniel Penny should be held accountable. Now, I'm not saying this because I don't like Daniel Penny. I honestly feel bad for Daniel Penny. Because 
I know he was just trained. He, I'm assuming he just did what he was trained to do. And that's part of the problem. And this is where the martial arts come in. It's part of the problem of how martial arts tends to be taught, not just to soldiers, but to civilians too. I don't think there's enough stressing that there is a time and place for everything that you're doing. Either it's not being stressed enough when people are teaching or what I actually suspect is that there, people are being told this, but it goes in one ear, not the other. And people just do what they want to do anyway when they're in the thick of it. So, and this was something I said when I was at the, uh, the tournament last, well, last week from this video. I said it to someone at the tournament, I'm not going to say who, I don't even want, I don't want anybody dragged into any type of internet hate I may get for it. Daring to say that someone should be tried for committing a crime, right? I said, we need to stop teaching some of this stuff to civilians, period. Now I know um, Daniel Penny was not a civilian when he learned this move, but he's a civilian now. I'm like, should we, you know, we can't, we can't get away with not training soldiers, I guess, but maybe we need to just teach sport versions of techniques to everybody and act like the, the, uh, jitsu version of stuff doesn't exist. Okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about by jitsu. In martial arts, you have Do, D-O, and Jitsu, two suffixes from the Japanese language. Do, D-O means way. Jitsu, J-I-T-S-S-U means, I believe it means method or fighting way or fighting, fighting method. So you can teach, like if you teach Karate Do, well, this is a better example that people are familiar with. You have heard of Judo and you have heard of Jiu-Jitsu. Even though the way most people do them now, they are both tend to be done by most people as sport. Jiu-jitsu means fighting, Jew gentle fighting method. Judo means gentle fighting way. My primary style, Taekwondo, foot fist way. If I said, I really want to just teach you how to fight with it and not care about do way philosophy outlook i would say technically i should be saying taekwon jitsu even though taekwon would come from korean language and jitsu would come from a japanese language a better translation might be you could say tang su jitsu or karate jitsu if you're not using it to teach the philosophy Basically, I mean, I think people just want the jitsu. They don't want the philosophy. But when you apply these techniques without any philosophy, any sense of restraint, anything like that, people die. People can die. So any martial artists who look at these things, that's why I really think martial artists should look at these news stories and these news events that involve use of force, especially if it involves something that's unarmed use of force and you see that this can lead to someone losing their life this is a perfect example of why your instructors harp on you about control this is a perfect example of why people on the internet who want to talk about we should go hard and we should go real and they criticize people who don't spar and things like that people that are talking that way are giving you bad advice there's a reason why we have control. There's a reason why we don't go full all out all of the time. It is because people can die, not just get hurt, not just get bruised, die. You don't apply these techniques with control, with restraint. You can kill someone. You could end up killing someone in practice just to learn. So then if you don't have any sort of control in your mind 
or any type of restraint in your mind, if you ever have to use this on someone to just hold them down, you can end up um, you can end up taking their life. Even if someone were to use what we think of as Taekwondo techniques, the strikes. Let's say if it was a Taekwondoan that is on the hook for the death of Jordan Neely. If the Taekwondoan had to strike him, the Taekwondoan could strike him in a way where maybe they knock the wind out of him or strike him in a way where they stun him and then he's stopped that way. Or the person that's doing Taekwondo could strike him or kick him in a way that's fatal, just right off. What do you think would happen then? We'd still be in the same situation. You Do you really want to live in a world where we can say, well, he was making people, other people uncomfortable, so I kicked him to death? I'm going to switch back to the other because I, I want to show this. I, I'm going to switch back to the other thing. Hold on for a second, please. I'm going to see if I can find it. It was on this video I was looking at here. If you've managed to see some of these comments. Just bear with me. Here we go. This is the thing. Now, you know, if this person wants to get mad or whatever, you know, he did. it doesn't look like he or she used his or her, their, them days, real name. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Why does it have to? Here we go. Do you like being threatened to your face by a homeless person that said they take a bullet? Not much of a safe space once that happens. Also, I can't seem to find video of before the choking. If you've seen it, please share. So because someone is threatening you you should be able to terminate their existence on earth right no and this person responded here ann freeman no reason for a death sentence let me steal from willie d for a second I'm a Willie D fan. Yes, exactly. You're not supposed to get the death penalty because you're yelling at someone. Oh, now here's another thread here, right? What someone is saying, if he murders someone, why is it charged for manslaughter? Because it's unintentional killing. Murdered is premeditated. It, it obviously was not premeditated. That's why the charge is manslaughter. Then someone asked, would you have choked him to death? And he said, I don't know. I wasn't there. I have to held someone at gunpoint once after they tried to carjack someone at a gas station. Now, I'm glad you brought that up, whoever wrote this comment, because you said that you held someone at gunpoint. But did you shoot them because they tried to carjack someone at the gas station? No, you did not. Did you? No, you did not. And here's someone else that's saying that the fact that this individual was being charged is effing ridiculous. No, it is not ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. Because as this person said here, the Marine could have simply just held him down instead of taking it to the next step and killing Neely. Really? Yes, really. Keep those Marine killer instincts on the battlefield. The Marine made the wrong decision. 
should have just held him down, not choked the life out of him, bottom line. And see, where this really hits home for me is because I didn't see combat, but I was in the Marine Corps. And the martial arts helped with that. And I'm going to tell you how. See, what good martial arts training can do is it can plant into you physically by forcing you to do it physically and it doesn't happen overnight and it's something that takes years and it's something that you have to constantly practice but it does help it shows you if when you are properly taught that there are different degrees of force that you respond to a lot of times military is from zero to kill and they're, but they're training you for war. That's just it. They're training you to survive in a war zone. And I mean, you don't have time to be negotiating stuff when there's a war zone. There are bombs going off. You could step on a landmine and people are shooting at you. Anything like that could happen. Somebody can, people can literally pop up out of the ground, from what I've heard. People can literally pop up out of the ground and try to kill you. But in a situation like on the subway, where there's a big gap between people getting hurt and the threat of violence. If you're just going after the threat of violence with your empty hand techniques, you need to use the non-lethal form of the technique. And it is possible and you get to practice doing that in a comfortable setting. You can practice it even in competition, which is a stress setting. So that when you actually have to use this on this non-trained or poorly trained person, this person who's not a combatant, you should be able to use your technique without killing the person. Hopefully without injuring them at all. But sometimes you can't avoid even a little bit of injury. You may, you know, like I, I said in another video I did where someone was losing it and I had to deal with the person that was attacking me. I would have preferred to have handled it without a scratch, but the, the person did get a minor scratch. And it wasn't, no, it was no bleeding or anything. They were ashy. <laughs> they were ashy like I am. They were ashy. Can you see the ash here? No, I got some motion on. Oh, you can see the ash here. I don't know if the camera's going to pick up. Oh, the camera's picking up the ash. They were, they were ashy, and you could see the scratch because they were ashy, so. I don't mean to make light of this because this is just horrible. This is just, this is terrible. So I will recommend to anyone who has been in the military, if you didn't already have one, once you leave the military, sign up for a traditional martial arts class so you can learn. Okay, you learn kill, 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 go, go, go. Now you need to learn how to go from zero to 100. You need to learn in the 99 the 99, 98 steps between zero and 100 so that if you ever have to apply any type of empty hand force to someone in the real world or even weapons force, you understand that you have to match the threat with threat. You don't get to terminate someone's existence because they are a physical threat because you're not in a war zone. If they're not firing at you or they're not coming at you with a weapon, it's not war. And the people who judge you may even feel like that is not war, even if they are coming at you with a weapon. So you do need to think about how you're going to be judged. Contrary to what a lot of the tough guys will tell you, you do need to think about how you're going to be judged. You do need to think about how your actions are going to reflect upon you because you will be judged by people who were not there. And those people who were not there and who were not you will have your life in their hands and they're going to make a decision about it. The best you can hope to do in advance is try to do something to where you can make the best move that you possibly can. That's one terrible takeaway from this tragedy. And another takeaway from martial artists in general is there's any doubt as to why your teachers tell you to use control if there's any doubt as to why we have to use control when we're sparring and we're practicing this is a perfect example of why 
And God be with the families involved of both the accused and the victim. Because there's two families affected by this. And again, those other two people who were helping to hold him down should face some kind of charges also, in my opinion. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Be sure some people like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts and peace. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate it.